namin Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na aming gagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw ng ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasama. Amen. A blessed morning, dear students. Welcome to another session of Valenzuela Live Mathematics 7. We are now in week 5 of quarter 4. For today's lesson, we are going to focus on the organization and graphic presentation of data. Based on the most essential learning competencies set by the Department of Education, at the end of this session, you should be able to use appropriate graphs to represent organized data, such as line graph, histogram, and ogive. For our first activity, let us see what you already know about graphs, aside from the pie chart or circle graph and bar graph. Now, let's play word picks. Your task is to guess the word by simplifying the given expression consisting of pictures and letters. Are you ready? You have 5 seconds to write your answer in our comment box below. For the first set of word picks, 5 seconds, go! Very good! The correct answer is... Line graph. Next. Five seconds. Go. All right. The correct answer is histogram. And for the last set of pictures, five seconds. Go. That's really nice. Ojive is the correct answer. Last week, we introduced the different types of graphs. Also, we discussed how the organized data can be presented using pie chart or circle graph and bar graph. Today, let us dig deeper on the other graphs, specifically the line graph, histogram, and Ojive. Let's begin with the line graph. A line graph is used to represent changes in data over a period of time. In a line graph, data are represented using points which are connected using line segments. Line graph has different parts. First, the title. It tells what the graph is all about. Next, the axis. We have two axes, the horizontal axis or the x-axis, and the vertical axis or the y-axis. Next, the scale. It shows the units in the graph. This scale is on the y-axis. It is for the amount of stuff being measured. And here, in our example, it goes from 0 to 90. Next, the axis labels. It tells us about the information of the graph. In the x-axis, it shows things being compared. While in the y-axis, it tells what is being measured. Next, the points. It shows how many. These points gives the facts. For example, in this graph, there were 70 ice cream sandwiches sold on Friday. Next, the lines. The lines connecting the dots 
help show if the data is going up, going down, or staying the same. Lastly, the grid. It helps us read the units. Let's try an example. The following table shows the daily sales of Miro merchandise. Draw a line graph to represent the data. Now, given the line graph, answer the following questions. What should be the label for the horizontal axis? You have 5 seconds to key in your answer in our comment box below. Go! Very good! The correct answer is days. Next, what does the scale on vertical axis represent? Five seconds, go! Alright, the correct answer is sales in pesos. Next, can you give an appropriate title for the graph? Five seconds, go! Great! The correct answer is the daily sales of Miro merchandise. Next, on which day the merchandise got the lowest sales? Five seconds, go! Very good. Thursday is the correct answer. Next. On which day the merchandise got the highest sale? Five seconds. Go. All right. The correct answer is Saturday. Lastly, on what day the merchandise has the highest rate of increase in sale. Five seconds, go! That's really nice! The correct answer is Friday. Let us now proceed with the histogram. Histogram is a vertical bar graph of a frequency distribution of data values grouped into intervals. It uses adjacent rectangles whose widths represent class boundaries and whose lengths represent the frequencies. Next, how to gram. First, represent the data in the continuous or exclusive form if it is in the discontinuous or inclusive form. Can you spot the difference? Correct! In continuous form, there is no gap between the first and the second class. The highest number on the first class is also the lowest number on the second class. Making the lowest numbers in each class as the lower class boundaries and the highest number in each class as the upper class boundaries, how do we tally the scores if the given are the boundaries? We can use the rule that we include the lower bound in the interval but not in the upper bound. Consider the raw scores of the given table. For class 10 to 15, we only include the scores 10 to 14. We include 15 on the next class which is 15 to 20 since 15 here is a lower bound. Second, mark the class boundaries along the x-axis on the uniform scale. Third, mark the frequencies along the y-axis on a uniform scale. Fourth, Construct rectangles with class boundaries as bases and corresponding frequencies as heights. 
Lastly, give the title of the graph. Let us now proceed with the algebraic graph. A visual representation of the cumulative frequencies for a frequency distribution. A cumulative line graph, though it is quite similar to histogram, but instead of bars, points are being used. There are two types of ogive. First is the less than ogive. Then the second one is the greater than ogive. Let's begin with the less than ogive. The graph of the less than cumulative frequency distribution, which shows the number of observations less than the upper class boundary. In less than ogive, the less than cumulative frequencies are plotted against upper class boundaries. Now, how to construct a less than ogive? To construct a less than ogive, we need to add two columns for the upper class boundary and for the less than cumulative frequency. But since our table is in continuous form, the highest number in each class are already in the upper class boundaries. Thus, the upper class boundaries are 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. To complete the column for less than cumulative frequency, do you know where we are going to start adding the frequencies? Correct! We will start accumulating the frequency from 7. Since it is the frequency of the class containing the lowest scores, which is class 10, 15. Thus, under less than cumulative frequency, we will have 7, 19, 34, 42, 47, and 50. To interpret the table, the numerical value 19 under the column less than cumulative frequency means that there are 19 students who got score that is less than 20. The numerical value 42 under the column less than cumulative frequency means that there are 42 students who get score that is less than 30. To construct the graph of less than ogive, first, on the horizontal axis, place the upper class boundaries, and on the vertical axis, the less than cumulative frequencies with equal interval. Then, plot the upper class boundary with its corresponding less than cumulative frequency points and connect the points now how would you describe the graph of a less than ogive is it increasing or decreasing very good the graph of less than ogive is an increasing graph since we start adding the frequencies of class containing lowest scores and gradually increasing until we reach the class containing the highest scores. Let us now move on with the greater than ogive. Greater than ogive is the graph of the greater than cumulative frequency distribution which shows the number of observation greater than the lower class boundaries. It is where the greater than cumulative frequencies are plotted against the lower class boundaries. To construct a greater than ogive, we need to add two columns for the lower class boundary and for the greater than cumulative frequency. Thus, the lower class boundaries are 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35. To complete the column for greater than cumulative frequency, we will start accumulating the frequency from 3. Since it is the frequency of the class containing the highest scores, which is 35 to 40. Thus, under greater than cumulative frequency, we will have 
3, 8, 16, 31, 43, and 50. Now, to interpret the table, the numerical value of 50 under greater than cumulative frequency means that there are 50 students who got a score greater than 10. The numerical value of 31 under greater than cumulative frequency means that there are 31 students who got a score greater than 20. After completing the table, we are now ready to construct the graph of greater than ogive. Simply plot the lower class boundaries with its corresponding greater than cumulative frequencies. Then, connect the points. Now, how would you describe the graph of a greater than ogive? Is it increasing or decreasing? Correct! It is a decreasing graph. But what if the class interval is in discontinuous or inclusive form? How are we going to construct the less than ogive and the greater than ogive? Consider the following frequency distribution of 30 item math quiz of 7 aster. How many students took the math quiz in 7 aster? You have 5 seconds to write your answer in our comment box below. Very good. The correct answer is 50. Next, what is the lower class boundary of the class 28 to 30? Five seconds, go! Very good! The correct answer is 27.5 followed by 24.5, 21.5, 18.5, 19.5, 21.5, 21.5, 12.5 and 9.5. Remember, to get the lower class boundary, subtract 0 0.5 from the lower limit. Next, what is the upper limit of the class 10 to 12? 5 seconds, go! Great! The correct answer is 12. Because the upper class limit of a class is the largest data value that can go into the class. Next, what is the upper class boundary of the class 28 to 30? 5 seconds, go! Very good! The correct answer is 30.5 followed by 27.5, 24.5, 21.5, 18.5, 15.5, and 12.5. Because to get the upper class boundary, we need to add 0 0.5 to the upper limit. Next, from what class are we going to start accumulating the frequency for the less than cumulative frequency? Is it 10 to 12 or 28 to 30? Five seconds, go! Alright, we're going to start at 10 to 12 since it is the frequency of the class containing the lowest scores. Thus, under less than cumulative frequency, we will have 3, 9, 17, 27, 42, 48, and 50. Next, what value is in the cell under greater than cumulative frequency of class 22 to 24? 5 seconds, go! Alright, the correct answer is 23. Again, to complete the column for greater than cumulative frequency, we will start accumulating the frequency from 2. 
since it is the frequency of the class containing the highest scores, which is class 28 to 30. Thus, under greater than cumulative frequency, we will have 2, 8, 23, 33, 41, 47, and 50. Lastly, identify which of the two graphs is the graph of less than ogive and the graph of greater than ogive for the given frequency distribution. Five seconds, go! Very good! The correct answer is, the figure 1 is for the less than ogive, then the figure 2 is for the greater than ogive. Now, are you ready for the next activity? Alright! In this activity, all you have to do is to choose the letter of the graph that is being described or the one appropriate to use for the given situation. Type A if your answer is line graph, type B if your answer is histogram, and type C if your answer is ogive. You have 5 seconds to answer. Number 1. The graph used to represent changes in data gathered over a period of time. Is it letter A, B, or C? Five seconds, go! Very good! The correct answer is A, line graph. Number two. The graph which uses vertical adjacent rectangles whose width of the rectangles are class intervals. Is it letter A, letter B, or letter C? Five seconds, go! Great! The correct answer is B, histogram. Next, number three. A graph for cumulative frequencies are plotted against the class boundaries. Is it letter A, B, or C? Five seconds, go! Very good! The correct answer is letter C, Ogive. Next, number four. The best type of graph to visual the changes in the weight of a person for three months. Is it letter A, letter B, or letter C? Five seconds, go! Very good! The correct answer is A, line graph. Next. Number 5. A graph which shows whether accumulated total values is increasing or decreasing. Is it letter A, B, or C? 5 seconds. Go! Very good. The correct answer is C. Ogile. And for the last item, the best type of graph to show large frequency of data which are grouped into intervals. Is it letter A, letter B, or letter C? Five seconds, go! Great! The correct answer is B, histogram. So some of the important points of our today's lesson, for the organization and graphic presentation of data, we have the line graph. It is used to represent changes in data over a period of time. It illustrates that a particular trend is increasing, decreasing, or static over a period of time. We also have 
histogram, a vertical bar graph of a frequency distribution of data values grouped into intervals. It uses adjacent rectangles whose widths represent class intervals and whose lengths represent the frequencies. Lastly, the ogive, a visual representation of cumulative frequency for a frequency distribution. Let us now proceed with the question and answer portion regarding our lesson today. If you have any question, just type it in our comment section below. We are just going to answer a few questions, but don't worry. For sure, your subject teachers are there to answer your queries on our follow-up discussion tomorrow. The question is, what is the difference between a histogram and a bar graph? Bar graph makes use of rectangular bars with spaces between them, while histogram makes use of rectangular bars which are adjacent to each other because in histogram, the width of the rectangles represents class boundaries. For your assignment, answer what's more and what I can do of quarter 4, lesson 5, page 17 on your SLM. Before we end, I would like to share this quote from Osunsakin Adewale. The graph to success is not always straight. It has curves and intersections. And that ends our discussion for today. This is Sir Eldrin A. Espinosa of Gente de Leon National High School. Thank you and God bless everyone. Keep safe.